Good day to you all, dear ones, and welcome to this third day of November, day 307 in our journey through the Bible. Hello to everyone out there. My name's Hunter. I am your brother and Bible reading coach, somebody who shows up with you every day to spend a little time together in the pages of the Bible. And we're going to let the Bible do what it does and point the way to the one who is the living Word of God, the one alone who has the words of life. And so we gather here from all around the world, sisters and brothers, to listen, to pray, to receive, and to open our hearts to the God who is love. And today, friends, we are in the book of Job. That's where we'll start, chapter 25, and then we'll go on to Mark's gospel, chapters 13 and 14. I'm glad you're here. Job 25 Bildad's Third Response to Job Then Bildad the Shuhite replied, God is powerful and dreadful. He enforces peace in the heavens. Who is able to count his heavenly army? Doesn't his light shine on all the earth? How can a mortal be innocent before God? Can anyone born of a woman be pure? God is more glorious than the moon. He shines brighter than the stars. In comparison, people are maggots. We mortals are mere worms. Mark 13. As Jesus was leaving the temple that day, one of his disciples said, Teacher, look at these magnificent buildings. Look at the impressive stones in the walls. Jesus replied, Yes, look at these great buildings. But they will be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on top of another. Later, Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives across the valley from the temple. Peter, James, John, and Andrew came to him privately and asked him, Tell us when all this will happen. What sign will show us that these things are about to be fulfilled? Jesus replied, Don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many, and you will hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in many parts of the world as well as famines. But this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. When these things begin to happen, watch out. You will be handed over to the local councils and beaten in the synagogues. You will stand trial before governors and kings because you are my followers. This will be your opportunity to tell them about me. For the good news must first be preached to all nations But when you are arrested and stand trial, don't worry in advance about what to say. Just say what God tells you at that time. For it is not you who will be speaking, but the Holy Spirit. A brother will betray his brother to death. A father will betray his own child. And children will rebel against their parents and cause them to be killed. And everyone will hate you because you are my followers. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. The day is coming when you will see the sacrilegious object that causes desecration standing where it should not be. Reader, pay attention. Then those in Judea must flee to the hills. A person out on the deck of a roof must not go down into the house to pack. A person out in the field must not return even to get a coat. How terrible it will be for pregnant women and for nursing mothers in those days. And pray that your flight will not be in winter. For there will be greater anguish in those days than at any time since God created the world. And it will never be so great again. In fact, unless the Lord shortens that time of calamity, not a single person will survive. But for the sake of his chosen ones, he will shorten those days. Then if anyone tells you, look, here's the Messiah, or there he is, don't believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even God's chosen ones. Watch out. I have warned you about this ahead of time. At that time after the anguish of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will give no light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then everyone will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with great power and glory, and he will send out his angels to gather his chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven. Now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches bud and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things taking place, you can know that his return is very near, right at the door. 
I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass from the scene before all these things take place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself. Only the Father knows. And since you don't know when the time will come, be on guard, stay alert. The coming of the Son of Man will be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. When he left home, he gave each of his slaves instructions about work they were to do, and he told the gatekeeper to keep watch for his return. You too must keep watch, for you don't know when the master of the household will return, in the evening, at midnight, before dawn, or at daybreak. Don't let him find you sleeping when he arrives without warning. I say to you what I say to everyone. Watch for him. Mark 14 It was now two days before the Passover and festival of unleavened bread. The leading priests and the teachers of religious law were still looking for an opportunity to capture Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the Passover celebration, they agreed. Or the people may riot. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume made from the essence of nard. She broke open the jar and poured the perfume over his head. Some of those at the table were indignant. Why waste such expensive perfume, they asked. It could have been sold for a year's wages and the money given to the poor. So they scolded her harshly. But Jesus replied, Leave her alone. Why criticize her for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, and you can help them whenever you want to. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could, and has anointed my body for burial ahead of time. I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, went to the leading priest to arrange to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted when they heard why he had come and they promised to give him money. So he began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and prepare the Passover meal for you? So Jesus sent two of them into Jerusalem with these instructions. As you go into the city, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. So the two disciples went into the city and found everything just as Jesus had said. And they prepared the Passover meal there. In the evening Jesus arrived with the twelve. As they were at the table, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, one of you eating with me here will betray me. Greatly distressed, each one asked in turn, Am I the one? He replied, It is one of the twelve who is eating from this bowl with me. For the Son of Man must die, as the scriptures declared long ago. But how terrible it will be for the one who betrays him. It would be far better for that man if he had never been born. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It is poured out as a sacrifice for many. I tell you the truth, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. On the way, Jesus told them, All of you will desert me, for the scriptures say, God will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised from the dead... I will go ahead of you to Galilee and meet you there. Peter said to him, Even if everyone else deserts you, I never will. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, Peter. 
this very night before the rooster crows twice, you will deny three times that you even know me. No, declared Peter emphatically. Even if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And all the others vowed the same. They went to the olive grove called Gethsemane, and Jesus said, Sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, and he became deeply troubled and distressed. He told them, My soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little farther and fell to the ground. He prayed that if it were possible, the awful hour awaiting him might pass him by. Abba, Father, he cried out, everything is possible for you. Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned and found the disciples asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation, for the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus left them again and prayed the same prayer as before. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open, and they didn't know what to say. When he returned to them the third time, he said, Go ahead and sleep. Have your rest. But no, the time has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Up, let's be going. Look, my betrayer is here. And immediately, even as Jesus said this, Judas, one of the twelve disciples, arrived with the crowd of men armed with swords and clubs. They had been sent by the leading priests and teachers of religious law and the elders. The traitor Judas had given them a prearranged signal. You will know which one to arrest when I greet him with a kiss. Then you can take him away under guard. As soon as they arrived, Judas walked up to Jesus. Rabbi, he exclaimed, and gave him the kiss. Then the others grabbed Jesus and arrested him. But one of the men with Jesus pulled out a sword and struck the high priest's slave, slashing off his ear. Jesus asked them, Am I some dangerous revolutionary that you come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there among you teaching every day. But these things are happening to fulfill what the scriptures say about me. Then all his disciples deserted him and ran away. One young man following behind was clothed with only a long linen shirt. When the mob tried to grab him, he slipped out of his shirt and ran away naked. They took Jesus to the high priest's home where the leading priests, the elders, and the teachers of religious law had gathered. Meanwhile, Peter followed at a distance and went right into the high priest's courtyard. There he sat with the guards, warming himself by the fire. Inside, the leading priests in the entire high council were trying to find evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death, but they couldn't find any. Many false witnesses spoke against him, but they contradicted each other. Finally, some men stood up and gave this false testimony. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands, and in three days I'll build another made without human hands. But even then they didn't get their story straight. Then the high priest stood up before the others and asked Jesus, Well, aren't you going to answer these charges? What do you have to say for yourself? But Jesus was silent and made no reply. Then the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated in the place of power at God's right hand and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothing to show his horror and said, why do we need other witnesses? You've all heard this blasphemy. What is your verdict? Guilty, they all cried. He deserves to die. Then some of them began to spit at him, and they blindfolded him and beat him with their fists. Prophesy to us, they jeered, as the guards slapped him as they took him away. Meanwhile, Peter was in the courtyard below. One of the servant girls who worked for the high priest came by and noticed Peter warming himself at the fire. She looked at him closely and said, you were one of those with Jesus of Nazareth. But Peter denied it. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. And he went out into the entryway, just as a rooster crowed. When the servant girl saw him standing there, she began telling the others, This man is definitely one of them. But Peter denied it again. A little later, some of the other bystanders confronted Peter and said, You must be one of them because you are a Galilean. Peter swore, A curse on myself if I'm lying. I don't know this man you're talking about. And immediately the rooster crowed the second time. 
Suddenly, Jesus' words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny three times that you even know me. Then he broke down and wept. And now may our Lord who knows us, who receives us, who loves us, may he now give his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. The sufferings of Christ have started. They begin with a promise, a kiss, a sword, and a severed ear. We're all deaf, so it seems, to God's word. We've all denied and betrayed the living word. We're all suffering, as it were, with severed ears and lips that betray. We use our lips to declare our allegiance and our affection, and in the end we deny and we run away and we betray. Three times, loyal Peter uses his mouth to deny that he even knows Jesus. And the most disloyal, Judas, uses his mouth to betray Jesus with a kiss. Loyal and disloyal alike can't get their mouths to be true. Everyone lies. Everyone denies. Their mouths don't work, in part because their ears don't work. Jesus has been telling them that he is the one who will fulfill all scripture. He is the suffering servant Isaiah spoke about. He would win their victory by his suffering and death. Time and time again, he tried to tell them, but they can't hear it. Like the temple guard, their ears have been severed, unable to hear. It appears we've all been rendered deaf to the word of God, but Jesus is unflinching in the face of our lying lips and deaf ears Jesus will continue to fulfill all scripture. He will continue on his journey to the cross and he will heal our ears along the way. He will reattach ears that have been severed, unable to hear, causing them to hear again the life-giving words of the gospel. And when he is done, he will create something even more amazing. He will create new hearts, making us completely new from the inside out, New mouths, new ears, new hearts, new women, new men, from every tribe and nation, language and tongue, all will be made new. That's what Jesus has done. Sometimes in my mouth and ears and heart, they don't work. But Jesus is unflinching even now. He is completing the job he set out to do. And faithful is the one who began his good work in you. He will be faithful to complete it. (laughs) Hallelujah. My prayer is that we would live in the Spirit. Then our mouths and ears and hearts will work and we will be awakened to the miracle of the resurrection, to life and hope through Christ. That is the prayer that I have for my soul, friends. That's the prayer that I have for my family, for my wife, my daughters, my son. And that's a prayer that I have for you. May it be so. Let's continue now in a time of prayer. You can read along with these prayers in the show notes of today's podcast. Or feel free to meditate on these words that are being spoken over you, your family, and our world. And now, let us pray. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we might not fall into sin or be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far and those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit on all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
men. And now, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Lord, grant that I might not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that we receive, in the pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in the dying that we are born unto eternal life. Amen. And now as our Lord has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food. Now send us forth as forgiven people, healed and renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining me in those prayers today. And before I let you go, I want to remind those of you who have signed up for our email newsletter that you should have received that newsletter yesterday. And if you did not, be sure to check your spam folder. If you are listening today and you haven't signed up for that newsletter, we would encourage you to do that. Just head on over to the webpage and sign up for it there. It's free. We always try to bless you in that newsletter. We try to encourage you. We try to give you something. We want that thing to be a blessing to you. So if you want to get blessed, (laughs) sign up for that newsletter. Speaking of blessing, man, I'm so grateful for our partners. They are a blessing indeed. In fact, without these partners, this podcast doesn't exist. But because of partners, well, we've been able to do this every day for over 10 years years. That's a whole lot of podcasts that have gone out into the world. So I want to send a big shout out and a thank you to Helen Carey, Alan Wolf, David Judah, Deanne McCulley, James Atkins, Judy Poundstone, and Jeff and Natalie Eckhart. Blessings to you, my sisters and my brothers. So honored to serve with you in this important way. And I know that many of you out there are considering your end of your giving. Let me ask you to prayerfully consider giving to the Daily Radio Bible Podcast. To do that, just head on over to the webpage, dailyradiobible.com, and click on the donate link. Or if you're old school and you prefer to do things through the U.S. Post, you can reach us at Daily Radio Bible 2748 Northeast Molini Way. Hillsboro, Oregon, 97124. Well, hey, we've done it. We've done it again. And I plan on being back here again tomorrow to do it all over again. Until that time, let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let us always remember this. That you are loved. No doubt about it. All righty. Talk to you again tomorrow. You guys take care.